Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Mr. Smith, Jeremy Smith, uh, Photo of Day of the Grey. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Canon Rebel T4i. You guys remember not long ago, um, I did a little preview on this camera, and I kind of went over some of the specs and I didn't have it in hand. Uh, well now it's finally here, and uh, it got here a little bit faster than I thought it would, which is a good thing. Um, I haven't had a chance to shoot with it a whole lot yet, uh, but I already decided I'm going to make this video in two parts. So we're going to kind of go over all the controls and that sort of thing first, and I'll talk about some of the new features. Um, and in part two of this video, I'll be coming back after I do a little bit of shooting with it, and we'll take a look at some, uh, some of the samples and things like that. Um, just to recap over the features again, um, this is an 18 megapixel uh, APS-C DSLR. Um, it's not uh, not quite mid-range, but it's not entry level either. So it's kind of a, uh, it's basically at the top of the uh, entry level cameras, if that makes any sense. Uh, so this is going to be in the same class as uh, as something like uh, the something like the Sony A57 um, or the uh, Nikon D5100. So uh, it's kind of kind of fits into that range. Uh, there's lots and lots of similarities uh, between this camera and the uh, previous T3i model. Um, <clears throat> it still retains its 18 megapixel sensor. I, I kind of have this weird feeling all of a sudden because there was a time when Canon just kept on pushing forward in megapixels and you know Nikon kind of stayed behind and uh, it's kind of strange these days. It's almost like Nikon said we're sick of you guys complaining about lack of resolution. We're just gonna just like give you like a double helping of resolution. So we see cameras like the D3200 coming out at 24 megapixels, and, and cameras like the D800 coming out at 36. Um, and a lot of the Canon models are staying the same all of a sudden. So it's it's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, this stays at 18 megapixels. Um, it is a newer Digic 5 processor, so that gives us a little bit more speed. Um, it gives us uh, 5 frames per second on this camera, which is just pretty impressive. Um, and it should mean better low light uh, image quality as well. So that's something that that's something that's always to be looked forward to. Um, one other thing about this camera is the focusing system has improved also. So um, it's still 9 points, um, but it is a, a 9 point AF system that consists entirely of cross-type focus sensors. Um, basically what that means is uh, you know normal focus points can only uh, detect focus on lines that are running either uh, horizontal or vertical. Um, a cross-type sensor can detect uh, can detect focus on lines going either horizontal or vertical so they're basically more sensitive and uh, this camera's um, entire AF array is made up of, of, of cross-type focus points, uh, just like its big brother, uh, the 60D. So that's something that's nice. Uh, this camera also adds a new uh, focusing ability uh, in the live view mode, well, excuse me, in the video mode, rather. Um, the previous Canon models did not allow for auto-focusing in video mode. Um, as I kind of talked with you about in the preview, basically what Canon did is they took the uh, they took the uh, some of the, the pixels on the actual image sensor itself and they assigned those to focusing duties to kind of act in the same way that a normal phase detect autofocus system works. So that kind of gives you that initial quick focus and, uh, and after that initial focus is made then the standard contrast detect mechanism is used you know, like, a, like a point and shoot camera. So that hybrid focusing should mean much much better performance um, in live view shooting and also video, and I intend to test that. Um, unfortunately, I can't test it fully yet because alongside this camera, Canon introduced a couple of new lenses that have a uh, that have a, uh, a new designation in their name, uh, which is STM, which basically means that the lens has a newer focusing motor that's designed to focus better uh, during live view and during video. Um, they came out with a 135 millimeter uh, version, excuse me, a 18 to 135 millimeter lens uh, that has that new technology, and they also came out with a 40 millimeter pancake lens that has that technology. Uh, this camera is offered in three different forms. It's offered in a body only. Um, it's offered with the new 18 to 135 lens with the you know with the STM. 
Um, and then it's offered with the 18 to 55, you know, just a standard kit lens that's been used in, in pretty much all the other Rebels like the T2i. Um, and, and that lens, of course, being the older design, doesn't have that newer STM technology. Unfortunately, um, while I have the camera, I just have that 18 to 55 lens. I don't have the new lenses yet, but whenever I get those, I intend to test those out. Um, but anyways, until, uh, until part two, where we look at samples, uh, now we're just going to go ahead and take a closer look at the camera. Um, it, it also has a new touchscreen, and that's something that I'm very eager to show you guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, taking a closer look at this now. Um, immediately, the first thing that you notice about this camera, if, we, if you guys look up at the top there, so let me turn it over a bit. You'll see there right on top, um, it actually has a stereo microphone now, which is pretty neat. So we'll pick up all the stereo, uh, pick up all the, all the audio in stereo now. Um, very, very similar uh, body design to the T3i. Um, I noticed that with the, sorry with about the T2i, Canon started to uh, improve the build quality on some of the higher Rebels, which is <clears throat> always a good thing. Um, I will point out that most of the cameras in this range I do find personally just to be a little bit small, but once again, I always encourage everyone to go out and try each camera for themselves because what's too big for you is going to be just right for me. So it, it's just, you know, your mileage will vary, so to speak. Let's see as I shoot and present here. Okay. Alright, so <clears throat> you'll notice right there. Actually, let's get a bit closer. Okay, as you'll notice right here, um, pretty standard uh, connections. Um, microphone jack and remote jack right here, which is very, very good. We've got that. And then we have the HDMI port here on this side. Uh, which is at the bottom. Let's see if I can get my finger out the way there. Okay, We've got the HDMI down there at the bottom, and then up at the top there, that is your USB slash um, analog AV out. And yeah, you guys should know what I'm going to say again. Um, yeah, there's no HDMI cable included with this camera either. Uh, <laughs> Man, you guys know how I keep on ranting on and on about that, but really, I mean, Canon, Nikon, Sony, come on now. I mean, how hard is it to put a HDMI cable in the box? No one wants an analog cable these days. Okay, looking at the back of the camera now. Uh, sorry guys, I realized that I forgot to put the battery in after I charged it. I was so eager to get this out of the box. <laughs> okay, looking at the back, um, pretty standard layout for Canon. Um, that is one thing that I've always liked about Canon, is that <clears throat> even on their entry level bodies, they actually give you quite a bit of dedicated controls. So, you guys know by now, uh, from my uh, Nikon videos, that on Nikon, to make adjustments uh, to like ISO and white balance and all that, um, you have to press a button and then you have that little sidebar thing that appears over here, you know, that, uh, that you can select things from a list. Um, on Canon, though, I like how on the entry-level bodies, you still have dedicated little buttons here. So if you want to change your white balance, your up arrow there serves as WB, which is white balance. And then there you have it, and you can navigate through your options there. Um, <clears throat> same thing goes for your drive modes. Got all that there. As far as continuous shooting and self-timer and, and all that. And AF is the right side here. So we can go between just a standard single shot or the AI focus or even the continuous AI servo mode. <clears throat> and then let's see here, we've got the picture style control. So that allows you to change between your different color styles. Um, let's see, let me move this back a bit. There we go. So that allows you to change between your different uh, color styles. <clears throat> you can do different... Uh, different ones here. You've got just like a standard, you've got one that's a bit more subdued color for portraits, you've got like landscapes which boosts, which boosts your greens, kind of a neutral thing. <clears throat> um, I kind of forget what Faithful does actually. And of course monochrome is black and white. And then you have some that you can go in here and customize as well. 
So we can actually go in there and if you hit the info button, you can go in here and you can change the sharpening and contrast and saturation of each of these individually. You can kind of make your own little preset. <clears throat> so it's nice having all that there at your fingertips up at the top of the camera here. You have your ISO button as well. So I like having that. A little small thing I noticed is that they put a little indention on this so when, you, when you're holding the camera you can kind of feel what that is a little bit easier. So nice touch there. Um, all your standard scene modes and shooting modes are up here on the dial in normal, can, uh, in, in normal Canon style. Um, they did add, it used to be on the older cam cameras like the T2i, your video mode was over here in the dial and you had to change to it. You know, So if you were shooting a still, you had to try to get over to the video mode. Now it's much easier because this camera has has a little video position here on your on off so you know if you're if you have the camera on you say okay I just take some stills I want to get a bit of quick video just give this a quick slide and bang there you go instant video mode so much much easier now to transition between stills and video so definitely a nice touch go back to there so everything is uh, pretty standard here Canon and Nikon seem to be pretty good about leaving their controls somewhat the same and then uh, just kind of refining them a bit so they do good with that. Um, <clears throat> this of course is, let's see, let's go back a bit this way. This is a swing out type LCD. It goes up to the side and it swivels like that. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get some comments about this at some point. Um, but no guys, this camera is not in the same class as the Nikon D3200. Um, the older 5100 actually falls into this class of camera. But this is yet another reason why Nikon has no doubt got to have a 5200 coming pretty soon uh, that will compete with this camera. So anyways, um, <clears throat> this camera is a touchscreen. And at first I thought, oh god, not another touchscreen camera. But, um, after reading over the specs, I saw that it was a capacitive touchscreen, which is basically a fancy way of saying that you can touch the screen in more than one place at a time, and uh, it behaves like your iPhone, and it doesn't behave like, you know, some pocket PC from like 2002. So, it is a proper touchscreen. You can see here that we can swipe through the photos of this handsome fellow here. Let's see, let's zoom in on his face a bit. Oh yeah, that one was on the cover of Vogue. Okay, maybe not. Anyways, but yeah, you guys get the idea. So you've got the whole pinch to zoom, very iPhone and Android-esque, the way that works. And it works very well. I am very pleased that Canon left all the normal controls intact. So if you don't want to use that touchscreen, so you can still do it the old-fashioned way. And press your zoom in and zoom out buttons that we're all familiar with. And of course you can toggle through the photos just like just like that. So very, very nice on that. A couple other little quick things I'm gonna show you guys though. Let's see here, there's something in here I noticed. And of course, yeah, by the way, you can of course you can use the touch screen in all the menus too, so it works out very well. You do get the screen a bit dirty, but um <clears throat> we're all used to that these days with touch screen devices. See, let me show you guys the video here. And we're going to test this more when, when I'm out uh, actually doing something with this camera. But you can see here, I have it in the video mode now. And as I move the camera around, it is, it is focusing. Um, with one of those newer STM lenses, it will do much better with that. But you can notice even with just a regular <clears throat> lens, it still uh, starts to focus as I move it around. So that's cool. Okay, a couple other things I noticed, which I told you guys earlier, this is 5 frames per second, which is a lot of speed in a camera in this class. Right down here, under aspect ratio, uh, you can actually change this, which is something I thought, this is kind of one of those little small little things that you may not notice, but you can actually change your aspect ratio on this camera, which is something that you, uh, usually you don't get this many options on a camera at this level, so I was, I was impressed to see this here. 
Um, basically, this allows you to change the aspect ratio, aspect ratios, to something more suitable for a given print size. So, you know, like every day, I see people that uh, have a photo that they took with their camera, and they print like an eight by ten, and they wonder why it's, you know, why it's cropped. So, having these different aspect ratio options in here um, allows you to, you know, customize an aspect ratio for a given print size. There's even a 16:9 option in here, which is nice if you, uh, you know, if you want to display back on HDTV or something like that. So, just something that I thought was noteworthy. Um, nothing else to look at right now. I am going to hopefully take this out within the next couple of days and do more shooting with it. And of course, um, hopefully, I'll be getting some of the STM lenses in uh, very soon. So, until then. Uh, <clears throat> Until we get to part two, definitely subscribe and be on the lookout look out for part two of this video. Until then, this is Jeremy Smith, Photog J the Great, signing off.